Hey, it's Nathan. And today I wanted to like justify the study of measure preserving dynamics. I wanted to be like, this is a thing that we can look at just to jump into it. Like the, the idea that you can do the study of measure preserving dynamics and it's like fine or it makes sense is a big non-trivial thing or like it, it, doesn't feel like you should be able to study this thing because it feels like this set should be empty. The set of things that are, the measures that are preserved by a topological dynamical system feels like it should be empty because it's asking a, it's asking you to do a big thing. So let me tell you what a measure preserving system is or a measure preserving map is. So let X A me and Y B me be measure spaces. A measurable transformation T, which goes from X A me to Y B me, is called a measure preserving transformation if me composed with the pre-image of T is equal to me. So even though this is hard, there is this technical lemma that comes up. Uh, that says that if you have a pi system that generates the entire sigma algebra, then you can just check this equality on the pi system. So a pi system is just a collection of sets that are closed under finite intersections. And for the rest of this video, you're not really going to have to know what that means because uh, I just want to give you some examples of stuff. And I'll go back to the example that I use for dynamical systems, or that is used often for dynamical systems in a myriad of contexts, and that is the doubling map. So here, our pi system for the Borel sets on the circle, or the Borel sets on the interval 0, 1 under the equivalence relation 0 is equal to 1, is going to be, for us, the collection of unions of intervals where those intervals could be open or closed, or half open or half closed, what have you. Um, so that forms the pi system, it's closed under finite intersections. If we go ahead and look at an arbitrary open interval on 0, 1, then when I pre-image that interval, I'm going to get two intervals. So you go ahead and you take that pre-image and you, so you find that interval on the y-axis and you go across and you see where the endpoints hit the doubling maps branches or those lines that go from zero to one and then you draw lines down to the x-axis and that tells you what sets you have. So in particular when you take the pre-image of an interval from a to b under the doubling map what you get is you get the interval from a over two to b over two unioned with the interval from the quantity a plus one over two to the quantity b plus one over two. So um, if we go ahead and check the Lebesgue measure on the circle here, which is just your mathematical formalization of length. So if you're not sure what Lebesgue measure is, just think about length. So if you go ahead and look at the Lebesgue measure of the interval that you had, then you'll get just b minus a. And if you look at the Lebesgue measure of the pre-image of the interval, you'll get b minus a over 2 plus the quantity b plus 1 minus the quantity a plus 1 over 2, which is just b minus a plus b minus a all over 2, which is just b minus a. So measure is preserved here. So anyway, right, so measure is preserved here. Lebesgue measure is not the only measure that could be preserved, right? If we go ahead and instead look at the tripling map, which also preserves Lebesgue measure, and instead we look at the Dirac measure of concentration 1 at the point x is equal to 1 half, because 1 half is a fixed point of the tripling map, that Dirac measure will be preserved. It takes a little bit of work to see that. Um, you have to remember that you're working with pre-images and not forward images. So you have to remember that uh, if you go backward from anything that contains one half, you'll still contain one half. But if you didn't contain one half and you're going backwards, then you couldn't have contained one half because that would say, if you did contain one half, then going forward would go from one half to something new and then one half wouldn't be a fixed point and there's a whole there's a little bit of thought to be written down there but it still works and i encourage you to think about it if that just sounded like gibberish to you so the big question here is like okay it works for circle maps and you can preserve certain measures with particular circle maps but does it work for all of these systems or what systems do you have a measure to think about uh and if so, like, how do you make one of those measures? And the answer to that question of like, why can you do this? Or why would we want to think about this ever is the kirilov bogulubov theorem. And the kirilov bogulubov theorem says that for a topological dynamical system, T, 
the set M of T, which is going to be the set of all Borel probability measures on the space X that is preserved under T is not empty. This is a really cool theorem because one, it like justifies the study of a whole field of math in some sense. Uh, and two, it uses a very good breadth of real analysis knowledge um, and higher level real analysis knowledge uh, to prove it, which is like very, very fun. Um, in like algebra, you get these theorems that take bits from like combinatorics and topology and algebraic geometry and number theory, and you can like shove all of these things together to get a result. And the kirilov bogulubov theorem is an example of that in the realm of analysis, where instead of pulling things from combinatorics and number theory and algebraic geometry and algebraic topology and smashing them all together, what you do is you take all of these things from point set topology and functional analysis and uh, dynamics and you put them all together and you end up with this very interesting result that has a lot of power to it and in, in that it justifies the study of a field of math, which is very cool. So the proof idea that I'm going to present here is going to go through a lot of ideas that I have never talked about on this channel before, and I'm not going to talk about in this video. But the point of doing it this way is just to show you that like these sort of like really cool things that happen in algebra also sometimes happen in the flavor of analysis in its own analysis context. So how this proof idea goes is that you go ahead and let m of x be the set of all Borel probability measures on x. We know that there are Borel probability measures on x, because you have those Dirac delta measures of concentration one at particular points in X. As long as X is non-empty, non then the space of measures on X that are Borel probability measures is also non-empty. The Reese representation theorem, which is a theorem from classical analysis, tells you that you can go ahead and identify the set of Borel probability measures on X with a subset of the dual of the continuous real valued functions on x. Then we pull in a bit of knowledge from point set topology. In particular, since x is compact because t is the topological dynamical system, m of x, the set of all Borel probability measures on x, is compact as well. And in particular, from that topology, right, that the map s of a measure, which is by definition equal to the measure composed of the preimage is going to be a continuous affine self map of the set of Borel probability measures on X. And then we go ahead and take some ideas from functional analysis and probability theory and we combine those together to get our result. In particular, from probability theory, we go ahead and note that a mixture of Borel probability measures on a space is again a Borel probability measure on a space. So we know that the space of Borel probability measures on our compact metrizable space X is convex. And then from functional analysis and a little bit of dynamics, there's this thing called the schauder tikhonov fixed point theorem, which says that if you have a non-empty closed convex subset of a Banach space, then any continuous self-map of that closed convex set will have a fixed point. So in particular, since S was a continuous affine map, we know that S has a fixed point, but S of uh, a measure was just that measure composed with the preimage, and we go ahead and get that we have a measure is equal to a measure composed with the preimage, and so we have a measure within those uh, T invariant Borel probability measures on the space X. Now, that's kind of a little bit convoluted because you don't really construct the measure in that proof. So if you use that proof idea, you don't actually construct the measure. So if you want to go ahead and do a constructive proof of building a T invariant measure to show that there is actually a T invariant measure there, what you can do instead is you can do some work with mixtures of probability measures. So instead of using mixtures of probability measures to justify that the space is convex, you can go ahead and work with them directly to construct an invariant measure. And you do this with these things called Birkhoff averages. So um, for a particular measure that is within the Borel probability measures on X, so you could take a Dirac delta measure of concentration one at a point, you can then go ahead and define the nth measure as the arithmetic mean 
of those measures composed with the jth preimage, where j runs from 0 to n minus 1. Then you can show that this measure is going to be a Borel probability measure on the entire space for every n, and if you go ahead and limit n to infinity, that limit you can show is going to be a t invariant Borel probability measure on your space. So we've gone ahead and we've talked about certain examples. I've given you uh, a little bit of justification, not a full proof behind the kirilov bolgi lebov theorem, which sort of justifies this area of math. Uh, and now I wanted to talk about one of the like major theorems from this area, or one of the m more important theorems historically from this area of math, and that is Poincaré's recurrence theorem. So Poincaré's recurrence theorem says that if you have a measure-preserving dynamical system, so a map um, on a measure space that preserves the measure and also the underlying topological dynamical system is in fact a topological dynamical system, so you have a compact metricible space um, where you're doing your stuff, um, and that measure is a Borel probability measure on that space. I guess it doesn't have to be a Borel probability measure. It doesn't have to be a Borel, it just has to be a probability measure on that measure space. Then for every A that is measurable, the measure of the set of X's within that A that return to A infinitely often is going to be equal to the measure of the original set A. And the, which is like a very cool thing, right? Which it, it sort of says that like nothing in the closed system escapes itself or escapes its original position forever. Yeah, the proof here is just a little bit of measure theory and a little bit of understanding what it means to revisit a set infinitely often in terms of the discrete dynamical system or like iteration of the map. So we're going to go ahead and begin this proof by defining a set. So let n, which is equal to n of t of a, be by definition the set of all x's within a that never return to a. So under any iteration, n greater than or equal to 1, you're not going to enter a again. And then also we're going to define for every k, we're going to let n sub k to be the set of x's within a that never return to a after the kth iteration, or at the kth iteration and beyond rather, I should say, because we're going to use greater than or equal to k. Now this is going to be a subset of n of t to the k of a, which is just the set of all x's within a that never return to a under iterates of t to the k of a. And we're going to say that that set is the same as n of t to the k of a, which is just the set of all uh, x's within a that don't return to a after any iteration after the kth one. So by definition of n, n intersected with any of its preimages is empty. And the reason for this is that n is a subset of a, and it's in particular the one where x's never return to a after iteration. So if you were to go backwards and find an x that was both in n and in this preimage of n, then that x would be in a, and it would ne it's not supposed to go back into a ever, and that x, so you'd have a contradiction there. So um, just by the definition of n, n intersected with t inverse n of n is equal to the empty set for all n. So the empty set is equal to the preimage, any preimage or any jth preimage of n intersected with t to the minus k of n. And so that means that any two particular preimages of n do not intersect either. Hence, the sequence of preimages is a countable pairwise disjoint collection of sets. So from the countable additivity of measure and from the fact that you have a probability measure, we have that one is equal to the measure of the whole space, which is greater than or equal to the measure of the union of all of these preimages, because the union of all of those preimages is a subset of the space. And so by countable additivity, that's going to be equal to the sum over each individual preimage, which is going to be, by the invariance of the measure, equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the measure of n. If the measure of n was positive, then you would have infinity is less than or equal to 1, 
and that's a contradiction. So that can't happen. And the only possible measure that you can assign to n is going to be zero. So we now know that the measure of n is zero. And in particular, we know that if we were to go ahead and replace t with t to the k, we know that the measure of n of t to the k uh, and a is also equal to zero, which means that the measure of n sub k is equal to zero as n sub k is a subset of n of t to the k a. And so if you go ahead and take the measure of the union of all of those n sub k's as k runs from zero to infinity, you're going to get zero because a countable union of measure zero sets is also measure zero. And then finally, the end of this proof is just to note that if you go ahead and look at the complement of that union of all of those n sub k's, that's actually the set that we cared about originally. That's the set of all x's within a that infinitely often return to a. And so the measure of that set that we care about is going to be equal to, by the excision property of measure, the measure of a minus the measure of that union of stuff, but the measure of that union of stuff was zero, so we get back the measure of a again, which finishes the proof of point creators recurrence theorem, which I might talk a little bit more in depth about why this is interesting in another video, but I need to not because this video has gone on for too long and I'm trying to not make stuff go on for too long. So um, with that, yeah, that's, that's it for this video. Um, if you enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. There's other math stuff on this channel. Also, there's other stuff about me going through math academia things on this channel as well if you're interested in those. Uh, so yeah, you can subscribe You can subscribe for that stuff. Uh, give me a comment down below if there's certain stuff that you want to see in the future or certain topics that you would like me to go over in the future. Uh, and as always, I am Nathan. This one was chalk, and I will see you next time.